Okay, so here's the uh, complete model in the new frame, the Mia Microflight uh, frame for the JJRC H12C. And you can see how the model looks. It's got the LEDs embedded inside the frame. This is the bottom. This is a sticky bag Velcro. And this is the battery which also has Velcro. I like to put the fuzzy side on the battery side and then the, the more rough side of the Velcro, the loops on the on the model. That attaches like so. And all I need to do here is uh, install the uh, soft landing gear that's gonna be next. Everything's enclosed, the electronics are enclosed. It's very stable. I think this is a, a little more even more stable than the original stock version because everything's streamlined. There are no legs sticking on the bottom for the landing gear and uh, the camera for the FPV will go in the, the front end here with uh, these special little brackets that I made for the, this particular uh, frame. And very similar to the, just to give you a comparison with my Blade MQX modified for FPV flying. There's a Blade MQX. Now you can see my Blade MQX, MQX is even lighter at 79.5 grams because it uses the original carbon legs and so there's a little camera on the blind MQX and yes you can see it's well protected this is what I'm talking about what the camera being protected so when it lands upside down you know the nothing happens to the to the antenna it also has protection landing gear that protects the bottom side so when this drops it has you know some cushion to it so I'll be installing the same uh, type of um, cushion landing gear to this frame here so that's going to be done next this is the way of the model with the battery it's coming in at 133.3 grams in comparison to the Blade MQX modified for FPV with the camera and the battery now this one has two batteries, one for the one for the camera. It's got a dedicated battery and it's got the battery for the flight uh, control. So that one's coming out Okay, so let's do it this way. It's coming in at 101.8 grams. Now you see why I like my Blade MQX uh, setup here. It's very lightweight, you know, I get a little bit longer flight times than you get on the uh, JJRC H12C. But in this particular setup, you know, it's going to be a nice nice flyer. I mean, at least the frame is a, is a lot more durable than the, uh, than the original uh, you know, the frame. It's a uh, very spiffy frame at 133.3 grams, you know, complete with the uh, battery on board. Uh, the only thing missing from here is the camera, but this model can certainly take the little camera and its own little battery. This has a, you know, much more recent uh, controller board, and so the, uh, the motors are also pr probably a little bit better than the, uh, the original MQX that I use for FPV flying, although very similar size motors. You know, they, they have very similar specs, but I'm just going by the uh, premise that uh, since these models are fairly uh, recent, you know, they have better electronics, better uh, sensors, better processors than the Blade MQX had at that time. But, you know, if I've trained with the Blade MQX, you know, with this, this is even more, more stable than the Blade MQX. This one doesn't, it does not have the long landing gears. You know, when you put raise this high and you put landing gear at the bottom, you know, you have all these... Uh, additional items that are robbing you actually of uh, efficiency. So if you keep it streamlined, you know, very knife edge almost, you know, you improve the efficiency and this, the whole point of the, doing this frame here, not just to provide the um, strength, uh, added strength and, and, uh, and more durability and also, you know, it looks very, very nice. It almost looks like a, a 250, a typical 250 um, um, racing quad. You can certainly race with this even. Um, you know, because it's very lightweight. Now, one of the very important points of these particular 
choice um, uh, is that, uh, you know, they operate in one cell. And that's very important for learning to fly FPV because you don't, you, you don't want to have a heavy model to fly FPV with, uh, to begin with, because, you know, you have a lot more momentum, and until you get used to that, you know, it's better to start with one of these lighter ones that operate in one cell. Right. You can get five to eight minute flight times, depending how you fly this. Uh, so it's a great uh, platform for learning to fly FPV. Get this JJRC H12 seat. It's a very nice model. In fact, I have a, an order for two more uh, because I plan on doing a couple more of these, you know, for um, family members and friends. My son is going to get one of these. You know, this is my, my personal one. And, you know, I, I just finished the frame. Uh, I've been doing these videos. So I am going to be offering this frame also for people that have the JJRC H12C and I want to do something similar. If you have a similar model to the JJRC with, with similar motors and similar uh, gear motors and, and gearboxes, you can do the same thing. You can, you know, use this, certainly use this frame. But you can also use this frame if you want to employ, you know, small little brushless motors and you want to do, you know, the, the, the typical assembly that's done like the, uh, like the real. Uh, racing uh, quads are done. You know, everything is all the separate components with individual ESCs and its own control board. So you can do that also with a particular frame. It's designed not only to work, you know, with the components from the um, H12C, but also it can be customized further, you know, depending on how you want to do this. Anyway, the next video will wrap this up and we'll probably do a, a flight outside and probably we'll have the uh, little camera mounted on that model. This is a ded dedicated battery. This is, uh, I believe it's 200 milliamp hour capacity and it's a dedicated battery for the camera. This antenna here is my own antenna that I ended up uh, doing. Uh, it was a three uh, leaf, clover leaf uh, type of antenna, but that broke because I did basically what everybody, uh, you know, 90% of uh, people do is, uh, you know, they put these little cameras on top of their models and what happens is when you have that on top and the antenna sticking up, you land upside down, the antenna gets uh, beat up, and after a while, you know, of doing that, eventually these little antennas break. So, uh, what I did here is I placed the antenna so that it's uh, in between the the two frames here. It's a little bit lower, and it's got a, its own little bracket there for the uh, camera. Uh, it's well reinforced. This is uh, stuck there with double-sided uh, sticky uh, foam. And the antenna, as you can see, it's a little bit lower than the very top of the rotors here. So if this lands upside down, you know, the antenna is still clear from the hitting the ground. Likewise, you know, it's got these uh, rubber uh, protectors here for the landing or its landing gear. And when this comes down hard, you know, it has some cushion to it. Unlike the uh, original JJRC landing gear, which is a lot taller, you know, and it's also a little more rigid, so when you land hard, you know, that, that kind of, it does not, does not have that shock absorption as, the, as these uh, parts do on, on this uh, particular quadcopter. One of the things I wanted to point out here is that uh, this frame is, uh, you've seen the, the first and second part of these uh, videos, you know, when I started this, it, it all started by the uh, necessity of uh, uh, you, we're trying to, uh, you know, make the uh, JJRC H12C a little more uh, sturdier, more robust, because, you know, my, my son was uh, flying that and he ended up breaking it. And eventually you will too, because, you know, it's because it is a plastic shell that is holding the uh, the motors. So when the, those arms break, you know, that's it. You know, you, I mean, you can, you can glue it back on, but, um, but you know, it's not going to be the same. Uh, this is a lot more sturdier because it's made out of a uh, composite, so it's uh, you know it's it's very it, it's more durable than than the plastic stuff. And the way it's designed in sandwich form, it uh, it protects uh, you know the gearboxes, the motors, the motors are well protected. You know the motors are not going to come loose because the, uh, these motors are held by pressure via these uh, rubber uh, O-rings. I don't know if this camera will catch it, but there are some O-rings that are acting as spacers between the the gearbox and the top plate 
so when this compresses it compresses those rubber rings and it holds the motors in place while at the same time holding the gearbox in place so there's no need for screws or any additional hardware the hardware that you see here is because I'm using spacers here to hold the the two frames uh, um, in sandwich form and it, they're made out of nylon so it's very lightweight you can see the bottom it's got the uh, charging connector already there it's been uh, screwed on you know the, to the uh, uh, to the case that that comes with on the stock um, uh, product so I just reused those parts I did have to use some uh, longer screws these are two millimeter screws here the ones that come with the stock product are a little bit smaller but you know they certainly can handle you know, a little extra weight here because as is the frame is it's pretty lightweight um, here's the uh, camera if you still want to use the existing camera that comes with the uh, JJRC H12C you know it's a 2 megapixel camera they're not that great but you know if you, you can still use it to record if you that's all you have on off switch and the connector here for the battery is uh, well reinforced you know this is reinforced here I mean I didn't want to keep the, the wires loose on the uh, circuit board just like that I, I, I don't like doing that because eventually from use and, and constant uh, unplugging and then plugging back the, the battery you know the, these wires if they're not held to the frame um, properly you know that they, they tend to fray at the connection of the PC board and I didn't want to risk that so I ended up putting this uh, uh, clamp here for the for the uh, for the wires um, so very easy to you know take out the battery plug it back on you know I, I have like five packs that I fly this with seven seven hundred and fifty million power nanotech uh, uh, batteries and uh, you know they they you know they give me a, a pretty decent uh, flight time I think I, I, I can goes far as far as uh, six minutes you know with this particular setup here with the camera and, and its own little battery there the battery plugs underneath uh, the camera um, and it just connects to the side here via this JST connector and I notice how I did this this uh, setup here I have the JST right on top of the camera here so that I could plug in my just you know strap my battery just by velcro and plug this on the side. Now this is a little bit longer because I'm, these batteries that I'm that I'm using here have this uh, Wakira type uh, connector, and so this is an adapter for that um, that has the JST plug. But I do have some other batteries that I use. You know that they have direct JST plugs from the battery leads, so they they don't they don't have this connector. So those connect directly, and it's a lot more cleaner setup because you know the, the, the um, wires have the uh, JST. Uh, um, I think these are uh, the female end you know that plugs into the male side the antenna is uh, my own uh, antenna that I uh, did is a four uh, uh, four-sided antenna the original was a three clover leaf antenna uh, that broke because um, you know originally when I tried the camera you know I had it on top of the the, the um, uh, I had it on top of the uh, Wakira ladybird actually I was you know when I, when I was training with that one so and eventually the antenna broke so I ended up making a, a new one this is the one that comes with the PC board as the antenna stem which I really like because it's a little more sturdier than the, um, the, the, yeah, the simple coaxial cables that are attached to these cameras there there's so many variations of these cameras I think there's like five of them out there uh, and you can get them from Banggood or Hobby King I got this one from Hobby King it cost me almost $48 38 something but it's the elite made by quantum the, the picture quality that you see through this camera on your five inch screen in your FPB uh, headset is, is very very sharp and that's why I like this camera and it's only 600 TVL um, you know the resolution but uh, the power consumption also of this camera is, is a lot less than some of the similar cameras that are um, uh, out there you know you know so when you buy a, a camera for this uh, particular size quadcopter that operates at one cell you want to make sure that the camera operates at a very low current so it doesn't eat or suck up too much current you know from your battery you want the, your batteries to last but you want that to be also um, uh, very efficient so this camera in in those terms I think it's a lot more efficient than some of the other ones that are um, available for, from uh, Banggood uh, they sell it for about $25 this was, was 38 and I think Banggood also has a similar camera to this with the similar specs uh, 600 TVL 25 milliwatt um, it operates from uh, 3.2 uh, volts on up to 5 volts I believe 
and the current um, pull is, um, I believe, about two, 200 uh, milliamps. The other cameras are 300, and um, you know, uh, and, and they go up, you know, and, and they also go up in voltage. So it's a very nice little camera. Very, very happy with uh, with, the, with this little camera, and I got another an order for for my son that, because I'm going to do the same thing for my son, and I will probably be ordering some more antennas for uh, you know friends and a few other family members that are kind of wanting to get into this uh, you know fun uh, hobby. So um, this is the setup. Next video, I'm going to. Uh, I'm gonna do it uh, during the day. I'm gonna take this to a park and just um, take my uh, regular um, camera and film it, uh, you know, from a line of sight. And I'll also do another video with, uh, you know, from, with uh, my DVR that's on my FPV headset uh, during the daytime. And I'll really let let this uh, rip uh, in, in, out into the open. I've been I've been doing some flights, and you know, some of you may have seen some of the videos that I've done with my. Uh, Blade MQX. This is my Blade MQX, which is uh, one of the reasons I got this JJRC H12C is because of similar size and because it also operates at one cell. And very similar components, you know, the, the, um, the gearboxes are very similar to the Blade MQX. Um, but this has been my, let me talk about this one, it, it, just for comparison purposes. This has been my, my trusty um, FPV trainer. And you see how light this is. This is even lighter than this one. This one is coming out, you know, with the uh, antenna. This one with the FPV camera and the two batteries is coming out um, at about 133 grams. The Blade MQX, in comparison, as you see it here, with the camera, I, I had to take that camera to put, put it on the uh, on the other one. Uh, with the camera, the, the battery for the camera and the flight battery comes out at about a hundred, um, about 110 uh, grams, because it's lighter. You know, I'm, I'm still using the uh, original arms. These are the carbon square arms that, that came with the Blading PUX, and basically it's the same, same, same thing. The only thing different here that is not from the Blade MQX is the control board. Now this is a Ladybird control board that I ended up taking from the Lady Ladybird when I trashed that one uh, during uh, training. You know, I, I flew the heck out of that and then I ended up taking out that board and pu putting it here because I felt that this board was, uh, at the time that I did this, uh, uh, more um, more stable than the original Blade MQX uh, board that, that came uh, you know, with the original Blade MQX. Uh, or even the, uh, the Blade Nano QX, as some people have done kind of similar um, uh, modifications. But I'm using here the Lady Bird, and it's, I, I still fly this. I mean, uh, this is, uh, I, I take this with the other one, and I fly both of them. This is very lightweight, um, and it gives me a little longer. I, I mean, I get almost like eight minutes with, uh, with, the, with the 750 uh, milliamp hour cell, and, and a little more too, depending on how, I fl how hard I fly this. But this has uh, been my my trainer FPV, you know what I call the the MIA trainer FPV uh, quadcopter, uh, and the reason I'm calling it MIA trainer quadcopter is because you know I've embedded some of my my own features here. So basically, this is the uh, JJRC H12C um, components fitted onto the Mia Microflight. H12C composite frame. This is Mario with me on Microflight. Stay tuned for my flight videos that I'll be doing with this particular setup next. Thank you for watching.